Hi, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in how can the language of note-taking create risk for myself as an individual, my team, and my organization. My name is Jonathan Kemp. I'm a human intelligence entrepreneur and creator of Smart Wisdom, the scientifically proven next generation and note-taking technique. I've been helping people manage knowledge more effectively for the past 20 years. So I've made quite an interesting statement there. I've said that the language of note-taking actually creates risk. That's quite a big statement to make, not only for myself, but for the team around me. Not only that, for the organization I work for. That's a big claim there. And I'll explain why it's justified. So I've uh, obviously been through the education system. I was using note-taking um, and the note-taking language for years and never really thought much about it. And actually it was only this year when I started to look at a much deeper level as to my area of specialism and what language meant around that, that I suddenly realized that this language that we use without really thinking about it, notes, note-taking, note-making, etc., etc., actually has a huge implication and I'll explain why. And the solution's really simple as well. So when somebody says note-taking, they're referring to a very specific technique, very specific technique. It was developed 2000 years ago and we're trained to use it, indoctrinated to use it uh, in the education system. So it hasn't changed in 2000 years at all. It's when somebody says note-taking to you, what they're referring to in their own mind is a technique where you record what you're listening to or what you're reading, you record it to use at a later point in time. So attached to that is a mindset that as soon as I put pen to paper or I start typing on a, um, on a laptop, essentially what I'm doing for the most part is I'm, is I'm recording information to be used at a later point in time. So not right now. Um, notes, the word notes again, it's just sort of something that's part of note taking. Don't really think about it. Have you got some notes? Yes. Um, oh, I forgot to take them. Oh, it doesn't matter. But now actually look at <clears throat> how that has an impact in the workplace. Excuse me. and how it affects our mindset. So for example, I might be in an important meeting, I feel a little bit tired, and even though it's an important meeting, I think to myself, oh, I'm not gonna to bother to take notes. So I just sit and listen. Because I don't attach huge value to, the, to this word notes. But now let's think this through. So what I'm really saying is that actually the knowledge, so I'm gonna translate the word notes to knowledge, the knowledge in this meeting isn't that important. That's what I'm really saying. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a strategic decision to manage it by sitting and listening. So I'm gonna use the human brain. Now as an information athlete, I know the second I make that strategic decision, I'm gonna run a risk. Because by relying on the human brain, I put a cap on my ability to manage knowledge real time. One of the caps, short-term memory. I can only hold about seven plus or minus two chunks of information. So think action points. You know, how many action points can you easily remember? Nine, seven, five, but there is a capacity limit and that's a risk. The second structural limitation, the second I start listening, is what they call cognitive load. So as an information athlete, I know that cognitive load means that if I'm trying to say, remember a question or an idea, it's gonna cut my listening. And the more I try and remember it, it's gonna cut my understanding. So I've got a choice. Either I try and listen and understand, or I forget this question and this idea. But these could be crucial. This could make the difference between my next project or my organization's strategic plan being successful or not. And the cost of that could be in the millions. Or it could be, let me give you another example. Um, I'm walking out of a meeting and somebody says to me, oh, sorry, not a meeting, a presentation, a really important presentation, but everyone there is just sort of sitting and listening. And I made a decision to do the same. So somebody, uh, I walk out, somebody says to me, ah, oh, Jonathan, did you take some notes? And I go, ah, oh, no, I forgot. 
and they'll go, ah, oh, never mind, doesn't matter. Now change the word notes to knowledge. I walk out that important presentation and I meet my colleague and they went, did you capture the knowledge? That's a slightly different implication because knowledge, <clears throat> certainly in my mind, has substantial value, much more value than notes. So extrapolate that thinking. Basically what happens was in that presentation, I decided I'm not going to capture any knowledge. And it's a decision to do that. And the implication is the second I walk out of that um, presentation, within 24 to 48 hours, I'm going to forget about 65% or more. So then if I've got to try and communicate that important knowledge to my you know, colleagues, uh, maybe my clients, my capacity to do that over the next few days is just going to drop. And that is because I'm relying on the human brain and we know it has structural limitations. And then there are other examples. So who takes the notes in meetings? You've got a team of people. Who's going to take the notes? It's the junior person maybe even the graduate. The second, because we don't place any value on those. If we said, oh, who's going to capture the, the knowledge here? Would you get the most junior person to do it? Now, as an information athlete, I know that people speak at about 140 words a minute, roughly, maybe 120, 140, but people can only record between 20 and 30. So they have to filter a lot and they're capturing maybe only a fifth or a quarter of what's being said. So am I going to get the most junior person in there who can only capture a quarter or fifth of what's being said, has no prior knowledge, so doesn't really understand the significance of the, the various knowledge that's being shared, am I going to rely on that person? No. I mean, I might say, okay, you capture the knowledge, but my, myself, if I ask someone else to do that, I'll make sure I also capture the, what I think are the important knowledge. I won't capture everything, but the key knowledge that I think will make a difference, I'll capture it because I want to make sure whoever's producing the notes or producing the minutes has captured the right knowledge. So how do you prevent the language of note taking and notes from being a risk? is just change the terminology and I'll show you how. It's really simple and you've probably got a hang of it by now. So every time you hear your brain about to say the words notes, switch it to knowledge. So, oh, I can't be bothered to take notes today. Well, I can't be bothered to capture the knowledge. It's a different proposition. Rather than note taking, think of knowledge harvesting. It's a proactive activity where you're trying to capture the value add knowledge. Knowledge harvesting is a, sounds in my brain very different to note taking. Note making, which I associate with planning, think knowledge cultivation. So before I go into that meeting or before I write that presentation or make the verbal presentation, I want to cultivate the very best knowledge I have on that subject to give optimum value to the people I'm working with and also to come across as being really professional as well. It sounds like a, a little shift but actually in terms of like the mindset it's huge. So I hope you found value from this. Um, please do feel free to share it of course. So if you like it press the like button. Always feel free to um, comment in the comment box and of course as I mentioned feel free to share it with your friends, clients, colleagues or anybody in knowledge management or anybody who's interested in team performance or organizational performance. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. And of course up there, down there or on the sides you'll find a link to some uh, more value-added information I've put around managing information more effectively. Thank you very much for, ah, I nearly said calling, listening. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.